Hi everyone. In this video we will be preparing some calculations and then journal entries to record allowance for bad debts. Bad debt might also be called uncollectible accounts. It could also be called doubtful accounts. All of this means the same thing. Just depends on your business or if you're uh, taking classes right now. Uh, depends on what your textbook calls it. That's what we'll call it. I will call it bad debt because um, it's smaller words to type up sometimes so it uses less space. So companies often do grant credit to their customers. Um, this is called uh, credit sales. This is your accounts receivable that we talk about. Unfortunately, sometimes that um, those amounts, some of those amounts, hopefully not all of them, but some amount will prove to be uncollectible. Companies that are in this business will then, if it uh, doesn't happen very often, they may use something called a direct write-off amount so that they just write off as bad debt expense and then remove it from the account. This doesn't mean the customer doesn't still owe that account receivable or note receivable, but it means perhaps they're going to have to go through some collection uh, in order to be able to collect it. But the IRS desires for companies who have a pretty frequent bad debt to use this allowance method. And so that's what we're going to focus on here. There are different ways to calculate, different methods to calculate this bad debt. If, again, you're doing homework, you'll be told which method to use. If you're out in the real world working, then your company most likely already has a plan in place for how they estimate this. Usually the estimates are going to come from uh, some historical data, the way that uh, debt has been written off in the past. So let's just look at a couple. The first one, in fact, is that sort of problem. You see that uh, I have some um, information for Dexter Company here, um, net credit sales. So I say credit sales because usually cash sales are not included when we focus this way. Some of your problems might include all sales, but cash sales means, um, you know, that they've already paid the cash, so the chances of losing that are not very great. So net credit sales, these are the amounts of sales that have been charged by the customer so they are the accounts receivable. And then we have this estimated bad debts and that's based on uh, accounts receivable aging schedule. That'll be the second method that we use we won't need it for the first one. And then for the allowance for doubtful accounts, we're going to just assume for this problem that there is a $200 debit balance. Then I've drawn up some T accounts here for you. The accounts that are going to be impacted for this um, adjusting type entry, this is not a direct write-off now or this is not even writing off any bad debt at this point. We are just going to make the adjusting entry to account for or allow for the possibility that there could be some bad debt or doubtful accounts that need to be written down later. So first we're to prepare the journal entry to recognize bad debts as if they are estimated to be 2% of net credit sales for the year. So this is sometimes called the income statement method because it's focusing on sales revenue. Um, for the sales revenue we had the $2,300,000 $40,000. You just simply multiply that across by 2% and you get the number you see on the screen here which is $46,800. Your entry is going to be the same in that you use the same accounts. So we have bad debt expense or if you're using uncollectible accounts, it might be uncollectible accounts expense. It might be called doubtful accounts expense. I'm again calling it bad debt expense. It all means the same thing. And then the allowance for doubtful accounts, or you could say allowance for bad debt if you want it to match. I just put the different accounts up here just to illustrate again that they mean the same thing. So debit the expense, which increases that, and then we're going to credit the allowance for the doubtful accounts. So also notice um, in your T accounts, typically your allowance for de bad debt is a it's a contra account. It pairs up with your accounts receivable on the balance sheet, so it increases on the opposite side of an asset. It is uh, again an, an asset, but it's contra asset, so it's increasing over on the credit side. So when this 46800 if you were asked what's the balance in that account now, we'll put the 46800 in there. 
and now we need to net these two items. Okay, I just pull down the toolbar to make this a little bit more um, useful for us. And I also drew the line across to show that some math is about to take place. We have a number on the debit side and the credit side. And we can't leave it like that. We need to actually calculate the balance. So we have a, the credit balance, uh, the credit of 46,800 with a debit of 200. So the balance will fall on the side that has the largest number initially. So our actual balance in this allowance account, which again is carried on the balance sheet, is 46,600. And this is the using the method that is 2% of credit sales. Now let's look at a different method. Okay, so now we're going to prepare the journal entry using the aging approach. So the aging approach would be, typically it's going to be broke out over different percentages. For instance, if a, a customer owes you and the debt is 30 days old versus 60 days old versus 90 days old versus over 120 days old, each of those may have a different percentage associated with them. Usually the older debt gets to be, the more likely the customer is not going to be receiving it. So that number would go up for each one. But for us, we're not going to actually go through calculating that at this point. We are just going to take this number given to us as 48,000. This is uh, assuming that someone's already gone through and they've made the calculation for the aging. So 48,000 48, is the amount of estimated bad debt based on the accounts receivable aging schedule. So that means this is the end balance that we want to have in this T account. So let me just put that 48,000. This is to be our ending balance or what we desire to have in this account. That means we need to do something. We need to put a number over on the credit side of the allowance account that would enable us to have 48,000 as an ending balance. Well, we're already, because we've got this $200 debit balance, we are short. We wrote off more than we anticipated probably the last period, so we need to cover this as well. If I just put 48,000 here, it's not going to match up, so I actually am going to need to add in that shortage as well and put in 48,200 in this case. So when I do, um, I end up now with a 48,000 balance. So my entry would be bad debt expense 48,200 and then allowance for doubtful accounts would be 48,200. So this would be the amount of expense, the actual, um, and let me put it, I'll just put it in yellow there for you. So the amount of actual expense we're writing off, uh, we wrote off the 200 before and we need to add that to the ending balance that is desired at this time. So 48,200. So this is kind of a two prong test when you look at the accounts receivable aging method. You might hear this one called the balance sheet method because the focus is on the accounts receivable balances. Okay, let's look at another what if. So that's with a debit balance in that account. Now what if that account has a credit balance of 200. So I've just, everything's the same except I changed the balance. Instead of a debit balance, we have a credit balance. Well, we still want to have 48,000 as the end balance in this allowance account. So let me get that in, ending balance. So we're going to need to, again, credit the account here for some amount that would give us a balance of 48,000. Well, the 200,000, fortunately, is on the credit side, so that's the balance that's still remaining in that account. So we're going to subtract it now from the 48,000 total, and we get 47,800. So when you have $47,800, you add that 200 to it, then you end up overall with your 48,000, which is the desired ending balance for that account. Okay, so again, this method is a two-step approach. You have to calculate what you want the ending balance to be based on some aging schedule. And then you have to consider the allowance account that you have. What is the balance currently in there? And then make your entry 
journal entry based on that information. When we looked at the credit sales, remember we actually looked at the sales just so we could talk about it a little bit and look at what the balance would be, but the actual calculation that you make for that account is what the journal entry is made up of as well. This concludes your estimating bad debts.